Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and Bobby is still not uh, not around, so uh, I'm going to be doing the baseball preview show uh, solo today, and I'm going to be probably going live a little bit later as well. Uh, yesterday, I actually had a pretty good day. I, I played in that <laughs> that big tournament. I usually don't play on FanDuel when I came in the top 10, which was really, really strong. Hopefully, I can continue that today, and hopefully, I can give you some information, which uh, gets you on the right track as well. Um, so once again, the way I like to kind of do things is a little bit different than when I'm on with Bobby. I like to kind of take an overall slate view instead of going game by game. Uh, hopefully that works for you, but it's the way that I find, uh, find it most useful. And I'm, I'm going to start with the pitching because for me, you, you get two pitchers that at least for me kind of stand out over everybody else as, with, as far as my value rankings go. And it's not, it's not who, who's necessarily going to be the most popular. I think, I think they will be, but, but I don't know. Um, for, for me, the top two pitchers by, at least for now, by, by a decent amount are, are going to be Aaron Nola and, um, and Robbie and, uh, and Robbie Ray. Um, the, the, the price of these guys combined with their upside just makes for a good projection. And, and that's kind of what I'm basing this off of. I mean, they have a good median projection. They certainly have upside, meaning that they have good strikeouts and things like that. Um, so these two really do kind of stand out. For me. Um, my initial ownership has, has Nola at about 40% and, and Robbie Ray about 25. So it's not like anything particularly earth shattering, but, um, they, they do, they do look really, really good. The guy who I'm just not getting as much of as, as maybe some other people are, are is Shane McClanahan. Um, remember D DFS is, is a price game too. You know, and, and he is, look, he's put up some good games, but he's a full 1700 more than Nola, you know, and as full 900 more than Ray. So his projection is going to be very similar to these guys. And at that price, I mean, if you want to know the truth, I actually haven't projected it for less than, than both of these guys. I mean, that, that's just what I have. So I know it might be the kind of the cool thing to do is to, is to take McClanahan nowadays, but um, I don't know. I, I think I just prefer the other two. Um, that, that's as far as my numbers go. That's, that's what I'm getting. So uh, the, the, the next actually – the next two pitchers that I have are more cheapos. You know, I'm getting a kind of a good number on Chris Archer here. And it's a, you know, it's a little scary because he's never really, never really lived up to his potential. He had some injuries, had some issues and it's against Baltimore who very capable of putting up runs as they've shown. Um, and it is going to come down once again to whether you need the salary savings to have to go down to Chris Archer, because I mean, when you get guys like Nola and Ray, only 8,800. 8, the usual reality is that you could play pretty much whenever you want as far as hitting goes. So I don't know if this is the slate where you're going to have to pay down for pitching in the first place. But I think if you do, if, if you do feel that way, and we're going to get to some hitting in a little, in a little bit, that I think that uh, Chris Archer is, is, is a pretty decent spend down, as is uh, someone who's a obviously a little, little more expensive than him, and that would be uh, Urkuti. From uh, uh, from Houston. Now the only thing about him is that he's gonna, you know, he did have six strikeouts in his last game, but <clears throat> I don't really know as that big of a strikeout guy. But I think that Detroit kind of makes up for that a little bit. So I think he's certainly a good play. But if I'm gonna play him, I'm just I'm just gonna find the 200 for Robbie Ray. I just am. and and and. Um, Listen, I, I don't want to get into Robbie Ray's issues or whatever it is. I mean, this seems to be all kind of wrapped up in the projection, and it's just kind of just too strong for me. Um, and again, you know, even if you take the median out, he's, he's always a good tournament play anyway. Uh, the only thing that's kind of holding him back from being an elite tournament play right now is his ownership. Um, but aside from that, I mean, I just uh, I just prefer Robbie Ray. I'd find the 200. Um, well, I'd find the 1,000 for him, and I'd find the 200 I meant for Aaron Nolan. Sorry. Um, I already mentioned McClanahan, but I have, I have guys rated better than him. Like I, I have, um, for example, 
I mean, I have Logan Webb rated better than um, than McClanahan. I mean, I just do, and, and and part of the reason why is, I mean, St. 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 Louis, as they showed yesterday in a doubleheader. I mean, when they're up against when they're up against uh, what you call when they're up against lefties, they can they can do some damage, but against righties, it's a totally different team. I mean, I remember Logan Webb during the during the stretch last year, I mean, just really, really good. And I have no problem with him here either. Um, you know, maybe he's not an elite strikeout guy, but I mean, he's got big win equity. He's got innings equity. I mean, I, I, I like him more than, I mean, honestly, more than McClanahan. I mean, even, even I have them very, almost equal <laughs> in raw points. Um, I guess you could argue that McClanahan's got more upside, really, because of the, strikeouts but meaning that the strikeouts just comprise more of his medium than logan webb i guess logan webb is more you know more win equity and innings equity but um uh logan webb at 12 percent compared to shane mcclanahan at 25 for me it's kind of easy luzardo 8500 i prefer him to webb as well uh to mcclanahan as well not on a raw basis but at 8500 i think <coughs> I think that he's uh, he's okay, but I think all these I really do think all these guys are fringe. I, I think that um, you want to probably play Nolan Ray and try to get different hitting lines. That would be that would be my recommendation at least on this thing. <coughs> um, so let's take a look at the hitting side. Then we'll do some one offs also. Um. It looks as though the team, the three, I got three teams that rate high, three teams that rate higher than the others, just kind of on raw fantasy points. Um, that would be Minnesota. That would be Houston. And that would be Philly. Let's, you know, dive down a little more into that. Uh, Minnesota is up against uh, Spencer Watkins. You have Houston up against uh, Scooble. And you have Philadelphia up against Taiwan Walker. I think probably Minnesota has, I would say, the best matchup of them. But again, that's all kind of factored in. Um, that's why they're going to be probably the chalkiest of all of them. Mm, so Minnesota, Houston, Philly. If I, if I rank them by, by value, then it's still Minnesota and Houston and Philly. And then Baltimore kind of sneaks into the mix here. Um, so I would add Baltimore to my team. So the thing is that I don't think we're going to need Baltimore with, with these, with this pricing of these pitchers. I mean, I got 41, 50 in man. And let's just say I want to just kind of ignore ownership, for example, and just put in hitting. I mean, we'll put in Buxton. We'll put in Correa. We're just going to not even going to care about the, the pricing for a minute. We're going to put in Polanco. We're going to put in, um, is Kepler you thinking of play? Um, he isn't starting Wednesday, so we have to keep an eye on that one. Um, but if he plays, he gets in there, and then you get, I don't know, maybe Arias. So you can get all these guys in with no stress, you know, and they have plenty left for good one offs. So, so you don't really need the stress over value anywhere, um, you just have to stress over ownership. Let's see, just for example, like what, what the Houston ones look like. You want to put them in. Like, we don't care about price. We don't care about anything. Let's see. If you put in, let's, first of all, let's, what's this injury here? Um, right groin soreness. Well, let's just put them in for now. See what this looks like. I mean, you always have to use Perez, Alvarez in here. And you don't have to use Tucker against the lefty but you can, and then you got either Guriel, you could have um, McCormick. I mean, there are, you can play Pena even, and still have plenty left over. So playing Nolan Ray really makes your life simple. And I think that if you pay it from McClanahan, you just kind of just, you don't get, you don't gain much and you get, you cost yourself a little bit of that flexibility. So. Um, just to see pricing, let me see what Baltimore looks like. 
if we just wanted to play, you know, the best, the best plays. So put in um, Mullins, we'll put in um, Mancini, we'll put in uh, Santander, put in uh, Mount Castle, and then, um, is that it? Hayes, Moncastle, Mullins. So could we put Hayes in still, or are we out, we're out of outfielders? Yeah, we're out of outfielders now. Um, so you could put a four man in, and then you could, and then you could just pay up for whoever. But is there anybody you really even want to pay up for? You know what I'm saying? Like, like what, what, what are we getting out of this? You get to play Phillies, I guess. Actually, that is the next team to look at. So Phillies are expensive. So let's let's see what what the Philly stack would look like if we just didn't care about um, about ownership and anything else. And let's just see we didn't care about price. Let's say we put in uh, put in Harper. Let's put in Schwarber. We'll put in uh, Hoskins. We'll put in maybe Real Muto. And then we'll put in a bomb, for example. I mean, even here, you can get away with this if you want. And you don't even have to play these guys. You can go play um, Segura, play uh, you the guy, Castellanos, play all these guys. So, so, so it's really, it's really a slate where where Nola Ray just affords you just as much, really as much flexibility as you need. So, you want to play kind of a chalky build? That's what you do. You play, I think, play Nola and Ray, and then you can either stack Philly or Houston or Minnesota, and you really don't have to be do a lot of funny business. Um, so just for fun, I think what I'm going to want to do is I'm do I'm going to do a saber sim build. Well, actually, before I do that, sorry, let me look at FanDuel for a second. Let's see if there's any real difference on FanDuel. Um, on FanDuel, pitching wise, I still have Robbie Ray as the best actually because he's a full thousand cheaper than nola on there and then i actually have her cootie i'm still not getting some clinic and then it, it, with the stacks over there it looks very similar it's it's minnesota houston and philly i mean and, and then like a huge drop off so it looks like a really straightforward slate um but what that means so let's 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 see what saberson would do if we had it build lineups right now, which we don't have to. Um, let's go to the main slate. Let's put uh, GDFS in here. Okay. And let's build lineups. Let's build. Do I want to build 30 just to show you what I would get if I use my projections? One sec. I wonder if we'll get the same things. Maybe not. Maybe you get some McClanahan, maybe you get some other dudes. So yeah, so you'd still get the um the the Nola and Robbie Ray, but you get other stacks. You get Giants, you get Detroit, um, which is uh I don't know why I continue to be surprised at that, but it, it does have Minnesota as your number one. Um but if you want to go lower own, this is what you do. You play Detroit, you play the Mets, you play Tampa. And I guess that's that 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 certainly makes some sense. Um, when you want to win GPPs, you can't just go with the, the most likely to, to perform. So that is that. Let me, you know, just for you know, just to finish off the, the analysis, let me do the same thing with FanDuel. I'm going to use the FanDuel um Saber Sim. Oops, Saber Sim projections. We'll build 30 and see what we get over there.
So what we have here is Robbie Ray and what at about, yeah, spread out though. Actually 70% Robbie Ray and a bunch of twins. So nothing particularly earth shattering from the Saberson crowd either. Although it does come up with the Mets as well, um, which makes sense to get some pivots off of, off of Nolan that way. Um, okay, so that will do it. I will be here at six to, um, to go over kind of last thoughts after projections kind of came on in and um, that'll do it.